Ladies and gentlemen, warm welcome to today's webinar. I'm Tamiris Gorba and I am the Executive Assistant of GPSA South America. I am here today on behalf of our regional manager, Philip Close Moreiro, to warmly welcome you to our South America event series. During this webinar, all the participants are automatically muted and it's not possible to turn your camera on in order to ensure an stable screen. But we invite you to interact, asking questions via the, the question function, as we have around 10 minutes for an Q&A at the end of the show. I will start by introducing you, Huddle & Partner Brazil, and our local team, our Alliance Member Global Gap in Colombia, Peru Group, Latin America Fahain, and our supporters. Mr. Philip Close Moreiro is the managing partner in charge of our South America operations for three Huddle & Partner offices in Brazil, and the coordination of our GPSA partners in South America. Huddle & Partner, as you know, is the biggest German professional service firm with around 110 offices in 50 countries. However, serving clients in over 125 countries all over the world with the well-known German quality. In the countries where we don't have offices yet, our businesses are done in coordination with our trusted German professional service alliance members building the outer ring around our firm and offering you a complete service, auditing, BPO, and consulting. I would like to introduce the speakers for the webinar today. I'm sitting here together with Enrico Pfanna, our assistant uh, associate partner audit at the Digital Studio Sao Paulo, based in our regional head office and next doors to the German Chamber of Commerce here in Sao Paulo as well. Our audit team, led by Mr. João Marcelo, Head of Audit, is your provider of professional services made in Germany, working with an international team of Brazilian and German experts, as well as our trustful GPSA members. We are also very, very pleased to welcome our expert speaker from Bogotá, Mrs. Becky Cardoso. Uh, she's a founding partner of the consulting unit of Global Gap and a long-term trusted ally. And last but not least, we have the honor to present you Mr. Lilo Rotondo from Perry Group. He's the financial controller of the group accounting department, subsidiaries, and will provide insights from the headquarters perspective. We also would like to kindly thank our sponsors for today, Global Gap, Latin America Fahain, Ahaka, Ahaka Colombia, and Swiss Can Brazil for your great support. Well, get ready for your German Gap reporting package. And now it's my honor to hand the mic over to Bettina Zaxa from LFAO, who is participating live from Hamburg as a regional manager for Brazil and the non Spanish speaking countries in Latin America. And also, she's the coordinator of the LFAO Juniors. It is a great pleasure to have you in our webinar today. I hope you enjoy it. And Bettina, the floor is yours. Bettina, I think you're on mute. Um, now I think you can hear me. Yes, perfect. Um, all the, always the buttons, yeah. Good afternoon, welcome to everybody. Uh, bom dia a todos que nos assistem hoje no Brasil, na Colômbia ou na Alemanha. Uh, nice to have you all with us today. Um, as Tamiris told you, I'm Bettina Zaks. I work for the LA, LAV. It's the Association Empresarial para América Latina, or the Business Association for Latin America. We are based in Germany and work with the whole region. I'm responsible for Brazil. We are a platform. If you can change the next um, slide, please. We are a platform for information and for business contact. And I'm the regional manager for uh, Brazil. Brazil, yeah. It's always the interesting question um, where Brazil is uh, going on, how will it go on? And the answer is it is always goes, going on. Um, numbers on microeconomy are better than expected at the end of this year. Um, we were always talking about minus 9% of growth or whatever, and those numbers were corrected. The Corona voucher did its part in consumer market and expectations of the working class. Um, there are also polls that tell that people and uh, business atmosphere is increasing. People are trusting more um, in the future, expecting more from 2021. So even if there is a fiscal risk for the government to the disclosure of the definitive official Brazilian budget for 2021, unemployment remains around 13%, currency conversion about 5 to 1, 
euro or dollar to the Brazilian real. This is good for uh, Brazilian commodities and not so good for imported industrialized or semi-industrialized goods imported by the Brazilian industry, for example. So there are always chances to do business depending on the area you are on. But today we will talk about something more specific with perfect professionals from our LIV member, Rudel and Partner. Thank you for the cooperation. Um, and during this year, we did a, a series of events um, on and with Latin America on different topics and on different and about different countries in the region. So today we will be talking about a contabilidade perfeita para reporting para a sede alemã, or Deutsches Buchhaltungsrecht perfekt angewendet. Very complicated, but you saw the title of Röde in English. We will be talking in English because it's um, really international. And um, I want um, to, to mention in my brief words and closing, um, but you, of course, you all know this already, why you are here, why uh, this reporting according to German GAP rules is so important. It is important, for example, to avoid penalties, not only for the German headquarters, this is um, a big uh, responsibility, then of course um, the numbers always mean transparency and uh, it is about corporate governance. So that's why um, we need all to do this in this way and um, it's easier to know how to do it so you cannot, you don't have to correct all your numbers all the time. So enjoy the explanations, make a lot of questions and bring some added value to your task. Thank you. I think now it's Peiki. Yeah, this is us. If you want to enter in contact, you know where to find me. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm glad that you found this topic very important for your company. Uh, this is our agenda for today. First, we are going to talk about what is the HB2 from the financial risk perspective and reporting perspective. Then, together, with Enrico and Nilo, we develop uh, this before, during, and after approach of what you should be doing before, uh, af during, and after your reporting. Then Nilo is going to share with us um, his perspective at, um, as a headquarter controller. Then Enrico is going to share um, his perspective as an auditor, we then move to the conclusions and then we go to questions and answers from all the attendees. Um, and what is the our purpose of today? First, um, understand how this HB2 report is a legal requirement and it's very important, as you might know, to the headquarters. Uh, then just it is important to for us to share our experience, our knowledge as a um, Brazilian firm and firm in Colombia of working with uh, German companies and mostly auditing the HB2 report. Uh, but we want to um, our like main message will be that this is a team process, and as a team process through all that we are going to say, we are going to, to outstand that this is a process in which your financial team in your country, Colombia, Brazil, any country in the world, um, the finance team has to be involved, the headquarters too will be there to help you, and then us as your auditors will be there to share our knowledge and to make the process as smooth as possible. So, so let's start. So, what is the HB2 from the reporting perspective? Here in this slide, we have two uh, important um, pictures that you that you can see. First, you can see the handles book, which is the blue. Um, on the bottom, and that is the code, the commercial code in Germany. And in this book, you have the accounting and financial reporting. So um, towards the left of my slide, you can see where you can find 
those rules, the general regulation for corporations, and the additional regulation for corporations. So in this book, you can find all the rules that um, mostly median size and family owned companies in Germany have to um, fulfill or to comply. And then we have the DRSC, which is the Accounting and Standards Committee of Germany. It is something like the International Standards Board, like the YASB. So this is the entity that um, publishes or issue uh, or update these um, HB2 rules. And these rules are updated about every five years. So this is like our main framework. And if you want to um, have more knowledge or refer specifically to these rules, there you can find them. Uh, so next. So as I said, which companies should apply German GAP? Mostly uh, mid-size and family-owned companies. And then there are other companies or maybe some of your companies are already applying IFRS. And their IFRS are applied mostly uh, for companies that are in the stock exchange or companies uh, that are all, we're also set up in Germany and Europe and they have chosen these other standards, the IFRS standards to uh, report them financial information. Um, and what is the, we have another question that is, what is the relevance of these, um, of the German gap. They are important for um, debt in Germany because that is um, the rules that the banks understand in Germany. That uh, they are important from for the investors because uh, they understand these rules and for the dividends in Germany, uh, it is important to follow this regulation. And it is important for tax purposes because it's very aligned with tax rules in Germany. Um, and it is also to mention that these regulations are applied for individual financial statements and also for cons consolidated financial statements in Germany. And that's why we, in our countries, we have to uh, follow these rules or report this financial information with these rules. Uh, so moving to the next slide. So we are going to talk about the reporting process. Um, what do we do? How does it work? So what you can see, it is it's a funnel. So what you have first is your what we usually call HB1. So the HB1 is your statutory accounts, and then you go from your statutory accounts, uh, like a group goes to their statutory books in different countries to their HB2 of each subsidiary and then it goes to the group consolidated financial statements so that's the way uh the process uh work then um through this process you make adjustments and then these adjustments could be different some of them could be just the reclassification of information from your um set of accounts in your statutory accounts to the accounts in the um, HB2, the, the set of accounts that you group um, have sent you, or there could be revaluations, or, or there could be um, maybe applying other policies um, that are different from the local policies from uh, to the group policies. Um, so let's move to the next slide. So now let's talk about what we do before, during, and after. So we usually get uh, this kind of like a schedule that you are seeing here in which uh, your headquarters or your auditor said, well, first we have to do maybe the inventory or another different process, then the balance reconciliation, then processes with your assets, and then you get the audited version of your AB2, AB1, and then your audited version of 
your AB2. And then you get this list of activities and the dates. Uh, so, but through all this process, we want to uh, share what you should do before, what you wish is um, to run your internal control assessments and to understand accounting policies and to plan, to plan together so things will go very well. During, it is important to make a follow-up because uh, many things could change, something a uh, new transaction could arrive. And after the reporting process, it's always to monitor um, the process, what happened. Uh, and it is one thing that is very important is to uh, share that the process and what happened with the general management of the company of their or their director of the company. So they will help us to push changes if it is necessary and to think of coming challenges. So something that we want to do in the before process is to test yourself. So, so what I'm, we're going to do next, let's take a look at the um, before activities. Something that we are going to do here is we are going to, I'm going to ask you these questions and then you are going to test yourself. So for each question, so just take a piece of paper I'm going to read this question. For each question, you are going to give yourself a point. So if you have done this activity before the report, uh, you get one point. At the end, if you have done there, them all, you're going to get eight points or the points that you got for each question. And then we are going to show in our uh, screen uh, the brackets about your results, you choose uh, your, the result that you got, and then we share uh, the common results of everybody, okay? So just let's, let's start. First, do you have an updated version of the Group and Counting Principles Manual? Yes, no, no yet. So just rank yourself. Second, do you understand the accounting policies of the headquarters? Uh, this is very important because of the adjustments come from the understanding of the policies. Third question. Do you have a summary of the most important policies of your business from the headquarters in your own language? Uh, this is always a challenge and this is something important because sometimes our local teams don't speak English, so it is important to have it in a summary, something ready really quick to read and in your own language. So do you have it or not? Give yourself a, a point or not? Is there a list of the difference between HB1 and HB2? Have you made this list of say like, well, uh, the rule for the um, provision or impairment of the um, inventory is a difference or not? Do you have that list? So ask yourself, have you contacted your headquarters to answer your doubts? Have you done that? Or sometimes are you, uh, let's say, you don't really feel that confidence to talk to your headquarters? And uh, that was our fifth question. Question number six, the structure of HB2 reporting is clear to you. Have you looked at the difference of the structure? Uh, question number seven, have you addressed any technological challenges to open or manage the files property? Do you understand the filters, the checkbox in the um, report, or do you need, really need more training and have you asked for it? That's our question number seven. Number eight, have you meet with your auditor for a common understanding on the reporting process? Have you already talked or do you usually talk to your auditor to do your planning? So let's go to our poll question. Tamir is. Yes, Becky. Thank you. Let's do the poll question round. I will share now uh, with you who are watching us a poll question based on Becky's test. Okay. And you can just, um, we, we want to know from you. Are you prepared for your HB2 reports first steps? 
And if you get one to four points, it means that you have a room to improve. If you get five to six points, you are fine, but you can always improve. And if you get seven to eight points, congratulations, that means you are already well prepared. So now you're gonna give you some time for you to vote and to think uh, what's the best option for you, what suits you best. Okay, I'm gonna give you a few more seconds. Thank you, by the way, for the ones who are already voting. Okay, a few more seconds until you have a good average of participants. We have a lot already. Maybe people are still thinking. <laughs> okay, let's see. Okay, now I think we're ready and we can share the results. I'm gonna close the votation. And so most of the people, the most chosen was five to six points, Becky. Uh, do you have some comment about the result that you want to share? Um, well, I think what this really shows us is that we all have um, room to improve, to follow these steps to get ready to the um, HB2 report. So this is a good um, example of what is happening inside our um, companies in our different countries. So let's move up, um, to talk about what should we be doing during the um, reporting process. Okay, so let's move to the next slide. And by the way, you can use this checklist that we already um, use like questions to make sure that you follow these steps and then you will be more ready. So first, find taxes, tasks that are simultaneous that we can do as a team or that can you do simultaneously, like your internal auditor, your accounting team, the management, your auditors. And if there are things that you are doing, like everybody is doing the same thing, just avoid those tasks and they just have one person doing it. I think that's the smartest. Uh, need to, to explain the process and meeting like a kickoff meeting of the HB2 report of the R or a kickoff meeting of the audit will uh, allow you to share expectations or to clarify expectations and do the uh, planning process better. So that's very important. It is very important to understand the documents and the responsibilities. Sometimes, um, let's say we have some clients that need our financial statements under HB2 and they want them signed and the whole document and some other clients don't want that, they just want the local financial statements. So, so make sure that everybody understands what is the format, what is needed. So you don't waste efforts. Um, this is very important. Understand the kind of adjustments to be made. I already talked about that, but it's very important to double check your mapping because if your mapping is wrong, in a concept that you don't understand from the policies, then you start with a mistake. But if you clear out that mistake, then you you start with a very, um, how do you say, quality information. And it's very important if you're doing a reclassification, revaluation, re elimination, sometimes you have to eliminate a value of the your HB1. So understand what kind of adjustment it is. Also in that list that I mentioned, you can classify. Do you remember that I said, well, you should have a list of your differences? Well, you can have that list and then classify them, saying this is a reclassification, this is a revaluation, this is elimination. Uh, this and learn working with uh, Germans, we are all learning about each other culture. So they taught me not to wait until the last minute when you have a problem. So if you have a problem on Friday, and you already know, don't wait to tell them that you won't be on time or that you have a problem until Monday. Tell them right away, maybe everybody together could solve the problem or they will know what's going on. That's important to know what, what is happening with your report or with your activities. Um, keep on constant communication. That's 100% communication in this process help it to be very successful. If you have a um, special disclosure requirements, 
it is important that you understand them from the beginning so you can kind of like uh, have a flow of information that leads you to, to those disclosure requirements. And usually in the spreadsheets of the reporting, there are some check files. So it is important that you make sure that you understand how the checks happen uh, before or during the process so uh, all the information will be right. And what we what should we be doing after the process? So so the main the main objective of the HP2 reporting process is to produce meaningful information for the management, of course, about the uh, operations of your entity. Um, so always keep that in mind. So first, review if the goals were realistic. Sometimes some companies talk to us and say, well, we want the audit of the HP2 to be sent, I don't know, January 20th. And we have to really think, are we all capable to do that or that's not realistic? So always set up realistic goals. If something doesn't make sense, always communicate it. Evaluate the performance of your audit team. It's important. Like, were you in good communication? Did you receive all the feedback? Did you receive the help that you needed? Uh, the, were you in the same schedule? That's important. Evaluate the, the performance of our of your own accounting team. This is, so from my perspective, this is uh, very critical because sometimes if your team or somebody in your team doesn't have haven't performed as as you were expecting. It is a reason. Maybe there is a lack of knowledge. So you have to save the time to have some more training. Or maybe they didn't get enough information about the process. Or so it is very important to evaluate everything that happened internally with the accounting team. And so it is important to again um, group up and be together with your with everybody and talk about all of these um, evaluation of the process. It, it doesn't have to be a long and, and documented process. It could be a conversation in when you agree what, 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 when, fine, what you can improve and how to move on with responsibilities, activities in the next year. And something very important, what are the challenges of the coming year? For example, we never knew that it will be COVID this uh, 2020. Nobody saw that coming. Um, but um, still, that was in the news December last year in another um, places. So my question to myself, could we as auditors, accountants, like anybody could have seen this coming. So I just want to raise this question because I asked ask that to myself, uh, but there are many things that could be coming and could impact our financial companies. And sometimes we don't take the time to stop and, and think. Um, so this is what I wanted to, to share. And now we will have Lilo, thank you all our clients and all everybody to, to attend and we'll see you soon in the questions and the last at the end of our conference. Thanks. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you very much, Peggy. Um, good morning and good afternoon, everybody. Uh, first of all, um, thank you very much to Global Gap and Rödel and Partner for this great opportunity to share with you my experience with German Gap reporting. My name is Lilo Rotondo and I'm working with Peri since uh, 2011 in the department group accounting. And I'm mainly supporting our subsidiaries in North and Latin America, but as well as in uh, South Africa, Italy and United Kingdom. Before sharing with you some uh, meaningful information um, and common mistakes in HP tooling, I would like to give you a short overview about PERI. PERI was founded in 1969 by Arthur and Crystal Schwörer in Weisenau in the near from Ulf, uh, Ulm in the south of Germany. Uh, it is a still family owned company and one of the leading manufacturer and supplier of, uh, of foamwork and scaffolding system. 
various offerings, sale and rental of products, but as well as engineering solutions. Um, in 2019, Peary achieved the revenues of approximately 1.7 billion euros uh, with 9,500 employees worldwide in more than 60 subsidiaries and 160 logistics centers. So, so I would like to give you now um, an overview of some important information uh, relating to HP2 reporting and share my experience um, at Peary. Um, compared to, for example, IFRS or any other local gaps, uh, German GAP is a conservative accounting regulation and there are, are mainly differences in the revenue recognition and the valuation of assets. For Peary, it is very important that all subsidiaries follow the group accounting regulation without any exception. For example, a few years ago, I had a discussion with an um, D of one of our subsidiaries regarding um, our accounting regulations for bad debt reserve. Um, however, the MD advised his CFO not to set, set up any provision, um, although this decision was, of course, against our um, accounting regulation as he was of the opinion that the customer will pay and there will not be any risk. Due to this decision, the respective subsidiary had to a uh, negative impact uh, for year and close without any forewarning in quotation marks, of course. Um, after that experience, I could convince him that our accounting regulation have not been set up by chance, but to minimize um, the risk um, yeah, in the balance sheets. What in my opinion is very important too, is the transparency, transparency in accounting system and that you know the risks and opportunities in the balance sheet. Uh, you won't be able to steer your business with, uh, if you don't uh, know your numbers. At Peary, the relation between headquarter and subsidiary is one of the reason to be successful in its business. The relation is not only in one direction, but in both directions. Wien Headquarter always supports our subsidiaries in any topics and keep always an open communication. That's why there is confidence between all Peary co uh, companies. And I made the experience that with a good relationship to our subsidiaries, it is easier to improve things and additionally, it makes working much easier. However, if we do not understand each other due to different languages, the points mentioned before are not really valid. It is really important to define a corporate, a corporate language and that the most of employees are able to see, speak this uh, corporate language. To summarize, a good relationship between headquarters and subsidiaries regulations helps to make um, good and successful business. So if we go to the next slide, please. Um, as mentioned before, there are differences between German GAP and, yeah, for example, IFRS or any other local GAPs, which leads to mistakes in the HP2 reporting packages. I would like to give you an overview of some common mistakes in Peary's subsidiaries. Let's start with the revenue recognition. Um, there, the percentage of completion method is not allowed. And I, I had or just last week this kind of topic with our subsidiary in Denmark. Um, don't know, probably you have heard uh, about the Fairman Belt Tunnel project between Germany and Denmark. And Piri is involved in this project with um, yeah, del delivering formworks and scaffolding material, but is offering as well um, engineering services. And this service um, will be charged to the customer with a flat rate in advance. Our subsidiary in Denmark has to consider revenue for uh, under local gap um, according or according to the completion um, method. So means the pin depending of the completion of the work. Um, that's under German gap is not allowed. Um, next one, uh, some of our sub subsidiaries are mixing debt provision and provision for credit notes. 
that's, in my opinion, an uh, important issue, um, mainly because the consideration in the balance sheet is different, which, uh, which leads to wrong KPIs, like the calculation of DSO, for example. In another case, one of our subsidiaries considered the provision for credit notes in trade receivables by reducing them. And the main reason was to reduce the re trade receivable book value in order to improve the DSO. Um, in that case, I can only recommend to improve KPIs by improving business and not by bypassing accounting principles or accounting regulations. The, def uh, the definition of provision under German GAAP might be different to local GAAPs. Um, some peri subsidiaries report provision in liabilities, for example. In the past, this was mainly the case for provision for bonuses or commissions, uh, where they have been considered as liabilities and not as provision. Then it is not allowed to adjust retained earnings due to findings of late year end closing of the local financial statements. Um, in some of our subsidiaries, the year end close for local financial statements will be completed after the HP2 year end close. So that means that um, the HP2 books of prior year are already closed and they consider the findings of the local uh, year end close for HP2 uh, reporting purposes in retained earnings instead um, through the PL as income or expenses of prior period. Although the posting for consumption and reversal of provisions is well explained in our accounting manual, some subsidiaries have still difficulties uh, to do the right posting. That is mainly because the posting logic and the local gap might be different. Then last but not least, in equity, only in retained earnings can be a difference between local gap and HP2 reporting. The subscribed capital, but as well as capital or revenue reserve must be identical. So that's all from my side. Um, I would like to hand over now to Enrico. Um, very interesting insight from your side about the headquarter perspective. Thank you very much for this. Um, in the next more or less 20 minutes, I would like to give you an overview um, from the auditor perspective about um, important topics of the group accounting policies, the reconciliation from the cost of goods sold method to the total cost method in the profit and loss account, an overview about the audit process and maybe hot topics for the reporting package 2020. As mentioned by Becky and Lilo, um, the group accounting manual is the fundamental basis to apply the correct accounting rules. This is the reason I cannot tell you any new secrets because all information is already in the accounting manual. But from my pers personal experience, the most important and challenging topics to focus on are, for example, um, for simplification of the reporting could be the valuation of inventories and allowance for bad debt. For the valuation of inventories, um, verify in the group accounting manual if manufacturing costs are calculated identical at the local financial statement on the one hand and for group accounting purpose on the other hand. Since German GAAP comprised certain options for manufacturing costs, um, <clears throat> the identical valuation is possible. And this could make your reporting easier. This could be, should be aligned with the headquarter. The same for valuation allowance guidelines for devaluation of obsolete inventory items. An identical approach in local uh, reporting and group reporting could make the reporting much easier. For allowance for bad debts, verify in the group accounting manual if there if there's an identical definition of itemized allowance locally and for group reporting. If this is the case, 
no adjustment would be necessary and the simplification during the preparation process of your report package can occur. Leasing is more important since last year. In contrast to the local standards in Colombia and Brazil, which apply IFRS 16, German GAP has its own complex rules for leasing classification. There you have still two um, classifications like it was before IFRS 16. You have the operating lease, which only um, apply rental expenses through P&L and no balance sheet effect. And on the other side, there could be a classification as a finance lease. For the preparation of the reporting, be sure about the basic rules for leasing and the classification and align questions for the correct um, classification of your rental and leasing contracts with, uh, with your headquarter before the busy days. Another important topic are deferred taxes. Due to local regulations, um, deferred tax assets are often higher than deferred tax liabilities. For German Gap, this will lead to an option for the group to capitalize the net um, uh, deferred tax assets in their balance sheet. Make sure you provide necessary information to your headquarter for their decision to opt or not in a group financial statement to capitalize these deferred tax assets. Provisions were already mentioned as an important topic. Um, make sure you are aware of all necessary provisions. That means all liabilities with uncertain amount or an uncertain, uh, an uncertain date of payment after the balance sheet date. Most of group accounting manuals provide you guidelines and examples. You can use them to prepare your reporting and use them as your own checklist to prepare the reporting package for the group. Foreign exchange conversion. This is more important than ever. Um, here in, in Brazil and in Colombia, the foreign exchange rate variation have been very volatile and this has a big effect in the financial statements. Verify the appropriate foreign exchange rate from the group accounting guidelines at year end. Make also sure that you treat receivables and liabilities in a foreign currency with a maturity longer than one year different in the reporting than in your local financial statement. Because under German GAAP, it is not allowed to recognize unrealized foreign exchange gains. So this could be a difference in your reporting package. And the all-time classic revenue recognition. Differences can occur regarding long-term um, construction or long-term service project with termination after the balance sheet date. Align with your headquarter, as Lilo already uh, gave an example to us, the correct application of the full completion me method in your reporting for this long-term project. In detail, this is one of the most complex topics and should be aligned, aligned at an early stage with your headquarter. On this slide, I would like to give you a overview about the cost of goods sold method versus a total cost method. This is a practical challenge for all reporting, the reconciliation from the cost of goods sold method to the total cost method under German GAAP. If you do the reallocation to the nature of costs, the net result is always the same. But what are the differences? In general, the cost of goods sold method means only cost to sold products enter into the profit and loss account of the year. 
In contrary, total cost method means that all expenses are recognized on an accrual basis, regardless the products were sold or not. That means for the reporting, um, also costs for production on stock has to be recognized. This item that you can see on the slide, changes in inventory, uh, special speciality for uh, German gap reporting. What about this P&L item? Very simplistically, um, it could be an increase or decrease of finished goods and work in progress in the balance sheet. And this defines the amount of change in inventory in the profit and loss account. The valuation of inventory determines the amount of change in inventory. However, the variation from the prior year to the current year does not include merchandise or raw materials. So keep in mind only work in progress and finished goods enter in this calculation. I would like to explain what, what does it mean to have an increase of finished goods and work in progress from one year to another. That means for the profit and loss account, it's a credit posting um, like additional income to neutralize the cost for the production on stock. On the other hand, a decrease of finished goods and work in progress from one year to another. That means you have a debit posting in your reporting like additional expenses to match additional costs in the period of the sale of your products or services. To summarize, a lot of companies are already well prepared and have an automatic reallocation implemented for this reporting issue. For those who are still in doubts and have space to improve with this complex topic, we can suggest at this point to align with your headquarter and work together on a jointly agreed definition and structure for the reallocation of P&L items. Therefore, each respective account for the local trial balance <clears throat> has to be defined and mapped to a P&L item according German GAP. Now I would like to give you an overview about the audit process why the auditor is asking to deliver one or two weeks before the headquarter deadline. Like Rome was not built in a single day, the audit process also needs time to be completed. It starts with the first step when we receive the first draft of the reporting package. We review the correct mapping, we check the application of the important um, rules of the accounting manual, we check opening balance and adjusted equity from the last year. A lot of information we get from our local audit, but not all information. And as you know, we auditors are always very curious. We always ask questions about significant topics to get a better understanding from an external point of view and to minimize risk of significant errors. In a second step, as audit firms, we are obliged to prepare a proper internal documentation, evaluate the findings of our audit and if they were relevant or not, and perform our internal quality review. On the last step, we prepare all necessary information to the headquarter and the group auditor who will use this for the preparation and audit of the group financial statement. In a nutshell, um, we need at least one week for the completion of our audit process, the more the better, prior to the final deadline of the headquarter. And now in the next slide, I want to give some yeah, insight about potential hot topics in the reporting package 2020. As I mentioned, uh, that leasing becomes more important due to the rules of IF16 
um, there would, uh, if you identify uh, leasing in your local financial statement, you have to be prepared to um, adjust this for the reporting package. Rules for IFRS 16, um, you have to capitalize a right of use on the, on the asset side and the leasing liability on the passive side. The rules under German GAAP are very dogmatic and still uh, divide between operating lease and finance lease. Finance lease, for example, special leasing um, and operating lease, for example, and office rent. If you have very significant leasing contracts, verify um, if you're for your reporting, the classification of an operating lease will apply because this would mean you have to eliminate the leasing asset and the leasing liability and reclassify and reevaluate uh, re uh, profit and loss effects. For example, um, an operating lease only show rental expenses in your profit and loss account and you have to el eliminate depreciation, amortization and interest expenses from your local financial statement. The next topic, long-term services. Um, as already mentioned, the percentage of completion method um, apply in a lot of local gaps, but under German gap, only the completed of contract method is possible to apply. Make sure you have a sufficient internal controlling of your long-term projects. This topic can have a significant impact on your balance sheet and profit and loss account. For example, um, between local gap and the reporting, carrying amounts of receivables, inventory, for example, calculation of work in progress, but also liabilities, for example, advance payments received, which cannot be recognized as revenue until completion of the project, will be different in the reporting. And for the PL, of course, revenues and change of inventories will have different amount. Be sure, don't leave this very complex topic until the end of the year because uh, proper the side calculation is really necessary to control the effects in your reporting. For foreign exchange conver uh, conversions, it is useful to align with your headquarter that all intercompany receivables and payables are recorded at year end in terms of a completion or to be to have all receivables and payables complete and align with your headquarter. Then apply the official group for an exchange rate for intercompany receivables and payables at year end. As I already mentioned, be aware if you have assets or liabilities um, with a maturity more than one year that you don't recognize unrealized um, foreign exchange gains in your profit and loss account. One important item is the financial result. Um, why? Get sure um, your mapping includes a correct classification of discounts, for example, bank charges and foreign exchange effects. Locally, Brazilian gap, Colombian gap, um, discounts, bank charges and foreign exchange rate effects are part of one financial result. Under German gap, these items are treated in a different way. And I will tell you, um, for example, discounts granted has to be reallocated into revenue and reduce them. On the contrary, discounts received in general um, have to be reallocated to cost of materials. Bank charges are part of other operating expenses and foreign exchange 
um, gains or losses, the same procedure, reallocation into other operating income or other operating. Last but not least, uh, provisions. Um, a statement of changes in provision has a yearly point of view and not a monthly. The usage or release of a provision cannot be higher than the opening balance amount. This is more a formal issue, I know. However, significant amounts will lead to questions by your headquarter for the proper uh, preparation of their notes. And as already mentioned, use the checklist of the group accounting manual to assure the completeness. I hope I could provide you with some insights from the auditor perspective. Now I hand over to Tamiris for the conclusion and our question and answer round. Thank you. Great, thank you very much, Becky, Lilo, and Enrico. Now we would like to hear the conclusions on the present topics. Becky, would you like to start sharing yours? Um, my main question, uh, my main conclusion um, about our presentation, as I said from the very beginning, is that this will be an easier process if you work as a team with all the stakeholders of the process. Uh, don't think that is a waste of time. Sometimes myself, I I think like a uh, meeting with this person and then and the time of everybody is not like that. One insight that somebody has like working together or talking together will save you that time. So better to work as a team. That's my conclusion. Thank you, Becky. Lilo, could you share your comments, please? Yeah, thank you very much, Tamiris. Um, my conclusion is, as I am already mentioned, to make a good and successful business, important uh, to follow the group accounting or the group regulations in general and a good relationship between headquarters and subsidiaries. And additionally, I would like to mention that um, HP2 reporting is not only a management reporting, but as well, um, yeah, the financial statements for the group. Thank you, Lilo and Hiko. And what about your conclusions? Would you share with us? Thank you, Tamiris. Yes, from the auditor perspective, um, the reporting package is as part of the worldwide consolidation process with tight deadlines for all participants. Um, and from this background, a preliminary alignment with your headquarter, but also with your auditor about important topics could save your limited time during the busy weeks. We as auditors need time to audit and a structured and aligned process is the key success factor to make your headquarter happy. That means deliver the quality within the deadline. And please allow me a final comment. Um, we as auditor are not your enemies. We are rather your business partner for all challenges and continuous improvements. Therefore, we provide feedback on the topics observed within the audit if necessary, we participate in workshop session or general trainings and make recommendations to improve your reporting. That's my conclusion. Thank you. Great. Thank you all for the participation. And now we start addressing your questions. And due to the time constraints, we might not be able to reply to all of you in this panel discussion, but we can come back to you individually after the show as our tools allows it. So, Becky, I hand over to you to make the questions. Thank you, um, Tamiris. There is one question, Lilo, that we have, uh, which is a very interesting topic, actually, to me, and you were talking about this project in Denmark, um, which is a great example. So, um, the question, that um, we have been asked. Let me let me read it again, and you can you can example it again. Why the POC cannot be applied on the German GAAP? That's our first question. Yeah, thank you very much, Becky, for the question. A good question. Um, however, um, yeah, as already men mentioned um, um, in advance, a German GAAP is. Um, a more conservative um, accounting regulation, and um, yeah, that's that's why in order to make sure that 
tracking is on the safe side, um, the percentage of, of completion in that case um, does, doesn't really make sense. And um, yeah, um, in general, just to be on the safe side, it is, yeah, um, um, and the German gap prefers to have the, the, um, the completed um, method. Okay, I'm gonna challenge you more, Clilo. Mm -hmm. So, sure. in my mind, if I think of this super expensive Dermont project, it will be lots of cost. Uh, you already mm -hmm. have a payment in, in advance. Maybe it's a long-term project, uh, so you cannot show this in your financials. So, how does this uh, logic? So we are moving uh, like from the standards to the logic. Uh, in the financial with a kind of situation like this because it is not 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 easy for the company in that market. So how does it work? Yeah, well, in that case, um, it is um, so we we um, we decided that um, as as I mentioned, the um, the revenue or the the invoice will be charged in advance um, as a flat rate. So and um, Peri Denmark and is is going to to consider this uh, um, according to the percentage of completion method under the gap, um, which they can yeah um, by controlling from controlling side um, easily um, verify. But um, under German gap in that case they have to consider the revenue when it is fully um, provided means in that case fully realized. So the difference will be that. Um, only when the in that project or not in that case the project the service uh, approach um, which is part of the project is fully provided um, the revenue will be considered in the PL in under German gap uh, reporting thank you welcome okay so the next question we have um, and I'm gonna ask this question to Enrico uh, so, how works the calculation of the fair taxes in the reporting package? That's a classical topic. Thank you, Becky. Um, in general, the temporary concept, which is uh, balance sheet orientated, is the same for German GAP, IFRS, Brazilian GAP, Colombian GAP. It's, it's the same. And for the reporting package is the comparison between um, the reconciled HB2 carrying amounts and the local Brazilian tax bases or the local Colombian tax bases. And any differences between this uh, two um, uh, HB2 and the local tax uh, uh, bases leads to differences. And these differences um, cause uh, deferred taxes. The presentation, for example, in the balance sheet um, under German GAP is a net presentation, but it's an option. Uh, a separated presentation could be uh, showed as well. Um, a net balance of deferred tax assets would mean that the capitalization is not mandatory, but could be optionally um, decided by the group. And but on the, on the other side, uh, a net balance of deferred tax liabilities over deferred deferred tax assetory, uh, deferred tax assets would lead to a mandatory recognition as a liability. So it, it's again a conservative approach of German gap. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna allow myself to add something in that topic of the deferred tax. Um, one of our clients uh, were asking us if they could, um, uh, how do you say, that book and deferred tax assets because they had uh, continue in losses over many years. So something to be very important in this case is to have your tax your local tax expert thinking of like in the deferred tax over the coming years from that losses, what you can really recover 
under the tax law because in our countries, Colombia and Brazil, the rules, the tax rules change change all the time. So sometimes what could be recovered one year, maybe the next year it won't because the tax, tax law just changed. So it's very important to, in this tax, uh, the first tax topic, if it is very material, it's very important for uh, everybody to involve the tax expert. I think that's a um, safe um, choice. Uh, so moving into um, our next question, um, Enrico, could you explain a little bit more the difference between operating lease and um, final lease under the HB2? Or if you want an interesting example to share with us, please, that's our next question. Okay, thank you, Becky. Um, yes, I can give an example. For example, operating lease, as I mentioned, um, will apply for rental of, for rental of office space. Um, because there's no transfer of an, uh, that's other classification rules under, under German GAP, no transfer of economical ownership at the end. And the, the lesser bears the risk associated with the ownership. Most of the cases, if you have such a rental of office space, which under IFRS 16 uh, applies for a leasing, but for German GAP, only an operating lease. And this, in general, there doesn't exist a fixed rental term. That means the leasing contract or rental contract can be terminated uh, within the usual terms of any time um, within the cancellation period. And in general, goods with a longer useful life uh, of leasing term um, that could be re-rented at any time, that's uh, office space again, a good example, um, qualify for this operating lease. An example for, for uh, finance lease um, would be a, sp a special lease um, because only um, the lessee can use this machine and 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 so it's, it's obvious that it's an uh, only have has value for him for the company or with um for example useful lives um more than 90 or less than 40 percent of the useful um of the useful life of an asset would apply for a finance lease but it's very the, the leasing rules under German GAP are very dogmatic and so you can follow the like a scheme to make your classification okay uh, I will I will land at an operating lease or at a finance lease and yeah but it's it's you have to read the contracts as well so it's it's a kind of complex topic and don't underestimate uh, this complexity well i just have a, a comment on these uh, that i want to um, verify with you so for the companies that apply full ifers uh, one of the main differences between hb2 and ifers will be the recognition of the right of using an asset and as and as intangible so for example if you are leasing our house over the two years then you under I first 16, you have to recognize the assets and the liability, but you don't have to do that under um, HB2. So that will be at the moment, one of the uh, main differences is that, do you agree with that? Yes, uh, th this was lead to uh, elimination of, of the leasing asset and leasing liability and in the PNL, you have to to recal or um, recalculate. Um, this means there's no depreciation because there's no assets and there are no interests because there's no leasing liability. But you have to reallocate this to other operating expenses um, because uh, of an operating lease only affects uh, this uh, PNL item. Yeah, but you can. Uh, it's it's 
possible to do it in a site calculation and then in the reporting make this reallocation and re-evaluation. Great. We have a question from Dimitris. So this question is for you as well, Enrico. It is, could, we, could you explain what is the main difference when registering goodwill under IFRS versus HB2? Question for me, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, locally the goodwill follow like in, in IFRS, uh, the impairment only approach. That means every year, you, uh, the company has to prepare an impairment test, which is complex. And then you have to see, okay, I have to impair my goodwill or not. And under German gap, um, this, is, this is more easier because the goodwill um, will have uh, a period for amortization, I think uh, five years. So, there will be a, a, a difference in the reporting um, from from the goodwill because of the not depreciation, if not occur in, a, in, in impairment in local gap, and the, the, the straightforward uh, depreciation under German gap. Great, thank you, uh, Enrico. We have a last question from our attendees, which is about the uh, provisions. So, so Lilo, what is uh, your uh, main advice to have the provisions accounting writing the HB2 or what common mistakes have you and what common mistakes have you seen in the provisions uh, accounting? Um, <clears throat> well, as I mentioned in the advance, the common mistake was to consider um, it rather uh, to, in liabilities rather than provision. Um, yeah, that was for example um, provision for bonus payments um, um, for um, or anniversary bonuses, um, which um, the company or the our subsidiaries in that case um, considered it as a liabilities because they said, yeah, we are sure we are going to pay it. Um, so and the, the amount is. Yeah, it's not sure, but we, we know that we have to pay that. So that's why it is a liability. And the German gap, um, when um, you have to pay this liability, or at least the amount is not uh, it is not um, sure, then uh, you have to consider it, it as, a, as a, um, a provision. And additionally, compared to IFRS, which consider a provision um, more like um, yeah, um, how the possibility uh, or the probability is um, to have this expense or this risk. This is independency in, on the German gap. Um, if you say there is a risk, okay, then you have to be conservative and to, to um, provide, to set up a provision. So, and that can be, for example, yeah, starting with provision for bonuses, um, expenses for anniversary bonuses, guarantees, outstanding invoices, um, then any contingent losses due to yeah, pending transactions, for example, or we appear we have, um, we, you, uh, it is common to, to set up a provision for buyback agreements with customer, which I know under IFRS, uh, this consideration is absolute different. Um, then, for example, um, provision any provision for contractual agreed uh, rebates, for example, and then then for auditing and consulting expenses, and of course as well for any litigation expenses. Okay, Lilo, we um, let me see. We don't have any other questions. Um, so, so I will um, say thank you again to to Lilo and Rico to team up with us, Global Gap, to prepare this conference. Um, it has been a great learning experience. Thank you for all our clients. I'm gonna pass the voice to to Tomiris to close up our uh, conference. Lovely, Becky. 
Thanks to all the panelists for sharing your insights today and experiences on this technical topic. We hope you enjoyed this webinar and as a reminder for any unanswered questions, we had some, we will contact you individually after the webinar, okay? And of course, feel free to contact us as well. We would love to hear from you. And if you are not in our distribution list yet, please contact us to subscribe to our newsletter to stay on top of our upcoming events. Please note that the system will send you a survey and we'll be very happy if you could reply and give us your honest feedback. We hope you are now ready and well prepared for your German GAP reporting package. Thank you all for the participation and have a wonderful afternoon or evening, wherever you are. Thank you.